Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. I'm a bit chilly. It's freezing. It's so freezing. It is cold. Yeah. It got down to... This week hasn't it got down to four degrees? But feels like one. <laughs> and I felt Don't like... start that. Well, it did. Feels uh, like... And I was like... Really... Feels like fucking cold. Yeah, it's... someone's not looking cold though. Yeah. Hi, Carl. He looks cool. He does look cool. It's... Okay, so today we're going to talk about a very generous donation. Yeah, yeah, we are going to talk about generous donation from a gentleman in the UK. Hi, Mark. How Hi. are you? Hello, Mark. Hope you're okay. And he informed us last year, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Towards the end of last year that he uh, is unwell, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And he has decided to donate his body to medical research or yes. to science. Yes, he has. Um, yeah. To one of the universities over there. Yeah, Cambridge hmm. University, which is a well-known university probably across the world, especially in Great Britain. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Mark was pretty keen for us to um, use the channel, I guess, in a way to get the message out that more people should do this to sort of explain how he's gone about the process of organising it, yeah, I guess yeah. you call it, and how he feels about it. Yeah. Uh, put a little um, few audios together for us to share. So I guess a lot of people would want to know why he's decided to do this and he's got a few reasons I guess mm -hmm. but what we might do is we might um, show you a few photos of Mark and yeah. um, and let him tell his story. Yeah. Basically ladies what's happened is that um, I found out um, quite recently that I've got a brain tumour and uh, as sad as that is it's not really all that much of a thing for me. I've kind of seen it coming for years, to be honest. Um, however, I've decided to donate my body to Cambridge University here in the UK as um, an anatomical cadaver. And what I'd like to do is send you over the paperwork from the Human Tissue Authority so that perhaps you could have a little look. I think it's really, um, really generous for him to do this with that thought of wanting to help others and yes. to want to encourage other people. Yeah. So firstly, to actually donate your body. Yeah. But Which... then to contact us to tell us so that we can make other people aware, aware of... of how it's done. Yeah. He wants to donate his body because he thinks it's a waste of his body to be cremated or buried yeah. when it could be used elsewhere for, for helping the, the people and research and stuff, which yeah. is very commendable. Yeah, it's so. something I think we could all think about. Yeah. And I yeah. think it's got a stigma attached to it. I think a lot of people don't want to do it because there's this, I know in Australia, um, having done a few wet labs where you actually work on the cadavers yeah. and you look at the um, dissections and stuff that have been done by the anatomy students, yeah. um, there's a lot of respect from the university and a lot of respect around um, the eventual um, interment of those bodies. There is, yeah. Um, yes. But I think the reason why a lot of people balk or hesitate to do that is because they're worried that their family won't get um, a farewell yeah, within right. a timely manner, if you know what I mean. That's right. Do you think? Yeah, I think it is like that because um, they're held for, I think it's a couple of years, and they would cremate the body to give the ashes back to the family, so yeah. it could take a long time. And they have a service here, I know that, because yes, I was invited to go to it. It's an interesting concept and it's something that I think more people should think about yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they should. So he's, uh, I think Mark just wants to get it out there and say, like, let's think about it, guys. Let's think about mm, maybe he's doing it and your body is a good thing. First of all, I am more than happy for you to share any of my information with the world. Um, only in that I want everybody else to be doing this as well. We don't need to be buried or burnt. We just need to be shared right it's very difficult for me to put these things into words right now the reason is that i don't have any family and i don't want to be a burden um to any of my friends or any of the family that i've chosen for myself it's for me i just see it as the most unselfish thing that i can do um it's like the best of recycling really isn't it I'm giving with this a lot better than you'd expect, to be perfectly honest. 
honest, um, probably because I've got balls made of lead. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, sorry if any of this information might be triggering or upsetting. I, that's not my intention. It's about education, and you girls are the only people in the world that I can think to uh, come to with this sort of stuff. It's more about education. It's more about teaching people about about the human body, about anatomy. That's why I've decided to become um, an anatomical cadaver rather than uh, donate my organs. So yeah, doctors can play operation with me <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, I just think it's the right way forward. Without education, where would any of us be? Well, with this, maybe we can change some things and get more people to go down this route because you know, our bodies are a precious gift given to us you know, by our parents and at the end of the day it's like if we can give that gift on after after death then why the hell not, you know? Why not? Mark's a bit of a fire twirler too. Is that what you call it? Fire twirler? Yeah, he's a fire twirler. Yeah, how cool yeah. is that? Yeah, he's a fire twirler. I'd be too scared to do that I reckon. Yeah. I'd set my hair on fire for a while. You would. It's like, why not? Why don't more people do this? They're bloody ridiculous not to. Having the memorials and burials and super embalming and all of that. No. Um, I've never been a big fan of embalming. Um, and it would have been my very, very, very last choice. I wanted a green burial. That's all I wanted. Throw me in the earth, you know, and chuck me in there. That's how I felt about it. That's all I wanted. Just to give my body back to Mother Nature. However, by making the decision that I've made, I'm not only giving my body back to Mother Nature, I'm sure they'll look after me at Cambridge, um, you know, post-mortem, but, um, but I think this gift's bigger than just giving my body back to the earth. That's kind of where I'm at with it. So, uh, the only request that I've made is that my head remain on my shoulders. Um, I don't want them to... Um, dissect me or as in you know chop off my head basically doesn't get much more morbid than that does it so yeah uh, in my experience from what I understand from time to time they do uh, mass dissection they do remove the head uh, to teach people about like you know the vocal cords and all that sort of stuff sometimes you can only really see things you know from the inside I just don't want them to cut my head off um, I don't know, maybe it's a Mary Antoinette moment, I have no idea. Uh, I, I just don't want them to cut my head off and that's it really. But yeah, uh, the NHS have been wonderful with me. Um, I've got all the medication and all of the, um, all of the drugs that I need to be just trying to live um, an ordinary life. Um, I've been a bit upside down of late, sort of sleeping through the day and awake through the night, which has been tough because um, I've missed out on quite a lot. But no, I've, I've got some lovely, lovely people around me and, um, and all is good. He's also a bit of an artist too. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah. I sent a few pictures of his artwork. Yeah. yeah, he's got them in a shop that his friend owns. Yeah. It's a bit therapeutic for him as well, which yeah. is nice. It's a nice out outlet. It upsets me that um, in, a, in a culture such as ours, for God's sake, that people can't look after their own and um, don't care for their own. I don't have anyone to come and look after me, so um, that's one of the reasons that I decided to donate myself to the HTA. I, I, I've got a happy life, um, happy friends. I don't um, particularly sit around waiting for this sort of thing to happen. Um, I just thought it would be better for me to uh, put these things in place so that my friends and family don't have to worry about that. So there's no absolute guarantee that I'm going to be accepted when I'm gone. I want to be remembered um, as a person that um, would pick someone up when they fell down. It kind of goes back to the, um, the thing that I said, like adventure before dementia. I'm just trying to get as much done and do as much as possible. So yeah, uh, adventure before dementia, I suppose. <laughs> just, uh, just getting on with it. Um, day to day, um, I feel quite rough, um, to be honest. Um, I've done sleep through the night. Um, I'm having trouble picking up medications and things. I've got to rely on friends and whatnot, which is just awful because I've always been very um, sort of self self carey in more ways than I can describe. Really, um, it's a bit of a 
bit of a strange one, really. Um, I never expected to feel as good about the decision as I do. I thought it was going to be a bit sort of perturbing and whatnot. But but now um, the Tissue Authority have been wonderful. Uh, and the other thing to point out is that um, between now and whenever, you know, there were a number of things that could happen. I could catch COVID and pop my clogs that way. I could uh, have other health complications that um, that might dictate that the Human Tissue Authority won't be able to accept my donation. And then I will have to have some kind of green burial or a bit like you, chuck me in a cardboard box. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't really care. I don't want cremating, I know that for sure. Um, I would much rather I think give myself back to the earth or back to um, back to other people, really. So it's quite a confronting thing to do filling in this paperwork because it's talking about you after you've deceased. Yeah, like it is. you have to read about what they're going to do, do and how they're gonna contact your family mm. and how your body's gonna be used and you yeah. know that, that can be that's quite confronting. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think Mark's a very brave man to be going down brave. this path. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're lucky. There's people like him uh, in the yeah. world. <laughs> very lucky. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if I could do it. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. I've never really thought about it neither. Really. Well, this has got you thinking about it, it hasn't has, it? Yeah, yeah. Imagine it has. that. There you go, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, the university will be contacted once. Mark has passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, arrangements will be made for his body to go to their facilities. I wonder if it's similar to here too because um, we, um, we'll we get deceased people in that have have donated their body to medical science and then we'll get the um, university calling us right. to check the body, to check for, you know, is the body okay intact as in there's no decomposition started, you know, you know, any anything on towards on the body. So why do they go to you instead of going straight to the university? Because facility? a lot of times the funeral homes store the bodies for a day ah. after they've been released from say hospital or wherever they've come from. Um, it's usually a hospital because it's not coroners they'll be uh, uh, referred from when they've had an autopsy. Right. So it's usually from the hospital and the hospital um, have a funeral home or the family have a funeral home that will pick the deceased us up we'll bring them into care and then because there's a process they have to go through with the paperwork before they actually say yes we are we can take Mr so-and-so or Mrs so-and-so into care right. you know the criteria is met you right. know so yeah we a lot of funeral homes will hold them but only for 24 hours I think it is and then they have to go right you know yeah Okay, so I'm just going through the documents here and looking at some of the information that Mark's had to give to the university on the forms. And there's just things general, you know, name, address, date of birth, etc. Um, and then it talks about any operations or medical conditions that you've had. Um, do you live outside of a 40 mile radius of the campus? And that's, mm. I guess, to do with what you're talking about now. Yeah. Um, details of your current GP so they can cross-reference records I guess yeah so we've been talking to Mark for quite a while about this and um, we have been struggling to work out exactly how to put this information yeah. together because obviously we can't be in the same room with him we've only talked over sort of uh, message but hopefully we've been able to put it together in such a way that yeah. um, it presents his story and his reasons for wanting to do this. Mm -hmm. And of course, we wish him all the best. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. you know, I think we he's do. an amazing man for doing this. We do, um, definitely, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank yeah. you to everyone who's going to benefit from what's learnt from looking at your body yeah. over time. Yeah, well, it's just uh, an amazing thing, to, you know, a very selfless thing to be doing, isn't it? To give up your, your body and you know, help other people, it's, you know, it's helping other people might make it easier through the process of his illness as well. I could. All right, so we rabbited on a little bit there and we, <laughs> ran, out of, we ran out of battery. Yeah. So anyway, we were just wrapping up and saying yeah. thank you to Mark for, we you know, giving us the uh, ability to tell his story. Mm, yes, and yes. Um, to everybody else out there who's considering this mm. and, um, and who's been through this, uh, in, I'd be interested to hear from anyone who has been through this from the other side as a family member, a close yeah. loved one who's had to deal with this. Um, uh, yeah, that, it w would be nice to know how actually the families 
feel about feel it. Feel about all yeah. the other side of it, yeah. Yeah. yeah it would be. But anyway, thank you, Mark. We wish yeah. you all the best. We no do. doubt we'll chat again. Yes. And um, I'm sure everybody from the channel is behind you. And um, mwah, we send yeah. you all our love. Yeah. You take care. <laughs> and to everybody else. Yes. Hope you're well and give it some consideration. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, think about it. You yeah. never know what major medical discovery might come from your little body lying yeah. there. Yeah. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks Take for care. watching, guys. Bye. Bye bye.